Well, I'm out on the local this afternoon. I only got a small window of opportunity, just a few hours. So I figured I'd duck down. Conditions aren't great. They look all right here, but when I duck around the corner, I'm going to be into some pretty stiff breeze, I think. So just going to take the opportunity that it presented itself. And I've decided to throw on some pretty large plastics, rig up some heavier gear and see if I can target a tide change and maybe go after one of those elusive jewies that I was lucky enough to hook into last time I was out here. So keep my fingers crossed and at least I'm out and about getting a bit of exercise and seeing a bit of our wonderful country. Come along for the ride, see how we go. If I don't manage to tangle with a mulloway or a jewfish as they're commonly known, well I'd be really happy with a good sized flathead as a acceptable bycatch. The plastics that I'm going to be throwing, the smallest of which is going to be about 3 inch, the largest of which is going to be 6 inch. So I'm going to be trolling hard bodies in between casting spots, running and gunning, seeing if I can locate some hungry fish and hopefully find a few spots that are out of the wind that don't make it too uncomfortable. You can't always pick the days that have got ideal tides and ideal conditions. Sometimes you've just got to go out. I generally like to fish the change of tide around low tide. Once again, sometimes you can't choose the tides and you just have to go out. So today it's a change of tide around high tide. A bit different tactics you need to use. But that tide change, it's like a dinner bell. It's a natural feeding time for the fish, so that's why I'm out here. That, and it was the only time I had. And that boat, people, is how you do it. You see somebody in a kayak or another boat fishing, you slow down a decent distance away, you slow down as you go past them, then you speed up once you pass them. You don't have to belt as close as you can past them, make huge waves. It might be funny to you, not funny to the person in the kayak. Same applies to jet skiers. Seaboat people, that is not how you do it. That is a tosser. Well, so far this afternoon, the fishing has been abysmally slow. Um, not a hit to be had after like at least an hour, probably longer. And um, one of the things that I find hardest to do when the fishing is slow, there's no action, is not only to maintain confidence, but to slow down. Everything action-wise speeds up. You work the, the, the lure quicker, you wind quicker, everything goes in fast motion because you, you're anxious. You're trying to force the issue, you're trying to make things happen when a lot of the time what you really need to do is slow down. And it takes a lot of conscious effort, for me at least, I don't know, maybe for you too, but it takes a lot of conscious effort to slow down. So sometimes I really have to remind myself, slow down that way. Let that little sit there in between. Working it. Give the fish a chance to see it. Not easy. Easy in theory. Not always easy in practice. Conditions are really tough today. I've got a lot of wind working against me. to 
see the line it's making it hard to keep in contact with the line. It's even been really hard to see what the tide is doing because I can't gauge the movement of the water, I can't gauge the movement of my kayak because the wind is affecting everything. So it's adding an extra layer of complexity to the situation. And if you're thinking that all of these sounds like excuses for the reason why I'm not catching fish, well, excuses or reasons, I suppose it all depends on where you sit. At the moment, I'm sitting in a kayak that hasn't caught any fish, so I suppose you could say that they're excuses. Got it. Got it. Oh yeah, this is the bite that I've been waiting for. I've been fishing all afternoon for this bite. I've been fishing long and hard and it's taken me to fight right through into the evening to get it. Lots of head shakes. Lots of head shakes. Some good heavy weight. I'm thinking at this stage that it's going to be the dewfish fish that I've been fishing for. It's the head shakes. I don't think it's going to be a huge fish, but it's hard to tell. There's a number of other fish that it could be in this system. It could be a flathead. Um, this system is also known for its big catfish, but I have my fingers crossed that it is the dewfish that I've been praying for. I'm not sure how much of this you're going to be seeing because the light is getting very low. Shed some light on this situation. There it is. There's the silver of a dewfish. Gonna rest the rod there. Try and rig this light up so that we can get a better angle on it. Get this net out. Now's not the time to rush it. Trust in your gear. There you go. Oh, that's been three hours more of solid casting. Doubting myself, thinking that I shouldn't have wasted my time. Should have stayed at home. Everybody else has gone. The water's been really busy. But look at that. That's the reward you get for going out when others stay at home, for staying out longer than everybody else. For 
putting in the hours that's what you get a beautiful slab of silver that's what you get look at that that's the four inch diesel minnows gold rush color one of my favorites that's the TT headlocks three eighths and that's the business end of a solid Dewey. Let's get him some water going through his gills. It was a short but pretty solid fight. I had heavier gear on tonight because I was specifically targeting these fish. The rod that I was using, um, that's the uh, LRF seven foot. And that's the heavier rod, that's the uh, seven foot. 702 heavy so uh yeah and i actually upped the uh that's 20 pound platypus braid and 30 pound fluorocarbon platypus leader so um, because i was specifically targeting these fish tonight um, i came prepared so i was able to put the brakes on this fella much quicker and uh yeah that feels really really good Look at that hook up right there in the top of the jaw. And he's mine. Beautiful. So there we go. There's 59 centimeters. And he's a good, I don't know. What's that? Maybe 15 centimeters longer. Either way, he's a great fish. So. I'm going to get that hook out. Okay, I think the GoPro is about to run out of battery, so it's time to say goodbye to this beautiful fish. See ya.